touring professional, an average golfer, a senior male, or a lady. You got the same shaft. The idea was the stiffer shaft provided control. However, the field component was miss missing from the equation. It's only been in the past decade that Ping started providing different flex options for, the, for their clubs. Now, I strongly believe there needs to be a compromise between having a shaft that provides a nice, soft feel, but with adequate control. Again, each golfer will have their own interpretation on what feel is. Now, hitting a club with a, uh, with a softer or stiffer shaft than what would be optimal for the golfer is not going to uh, cause huge disparities in distance, as you might think. Your swing speed and solidness of contact control a distance with all things else being the same. But it's the feel caused by the flexibility or lack of flexibility, again, that comes down to the timing aspect of the swing, which ultimately provides the, the control and the confidence that golfer has in the golf club. You or your customer maximizes control when you don't have to think about the flexibility of the shaft. If you do, then in the back of your mind, subconsciously, you're constantly making adjustments. And just like weight, selecting the proper flex for both control and feel needs to be tested with various shafts. Or again, um, pay close attention to those um, that have worked well in the past and avoid shafts with similar parameters which have caused undesirable uh, results. Feel can also be measured in other manners uh, besides just the flexibility of the shaft. Golfers that suffer from joint, hand, or other uh, related discomfort from hitting a golf ball might consider graphite shafts. As long as they're not too light, then the wall's not too thin to dampen vibration as much as a thicker walled shaft. And most golfers, um, they consider graphite shafts just for the weight savings. But in recent years, you see graphite shafts that weigh the same as most steel shafts. And now you're seeing steel shafts, at least in the irons, that are as light as many graphite models. You have other options, such as the Sensicore insert and the True Temper shafts that act, act well to dampen shock, uh, too. No matter how well you hit a club, if it doesn't feel good, you're less likely to use it. And conversely, no matter how good the feel is, if you can't control where the ball lands, you won't be using that club long either. That's why we need the right amount of balance. Okay. Lastly, there's one more role of the shaft, and that's to allow some change in the trajectory through the stiffness distribution and or the balance point of the golf shaft. Just like the type of ball you use or the loft and the center of gravity of the head, the shaft can influence the trajectory and the spin of the ball, although it has a minor role. We'll touch upon this more when we start looking at each of the individual shaft parameters. Now for years, Shaft fitting was, and still is, primarily based on how fast you swing the club or how far you hit the ball. In some cases, it may be based on your ball speed with the advent and accessibility of launch monitors. But distance can be misleading since many golfers will, you know, exaggerate just how far they hit the ball, or the golfer doesn't make solid enough contact to get an accurate correlation to the speed uh, that that a better goal or ball striker can provide, but at least it's a starting point. <coughs> now, flexes are presented in a generic nomenclature. For example, L, or ladies flex, is the most flexible of the five flexes. And traditionally, these are designed for golfers with swing speeds of 60 miles an hour or less. A flex, or what's referred to as senior or amateur, and that's where the A comes from is designed for uh, driver swing speeds between 65 and 75 miles an hour. R, or regular flex, is geared for the average male golfer whose driver swing speed is between 75 and 90. S, or stiff flex, is designed for golfers with a faster swing speed 
usually between 90 and 110. And the stiffest of the shafts is X or X or stiff, and designed for those who can swing their drivers above 110 miles an hour. While these make good generalities for shaft fitting, it's nowhere near exact for a couple of reasons. Now, after spending the past 20 years measuring thousands of shafts that have been available to club makers and fitters, I can absolutely say this, that there's no standardization when it comes to shaft flex. Now, flex is determined usually by one of two ways. First up is deflection, which is one of the oldest forms of uh, flex measurement. It is done by clamping the butt into the shaft and applying a known amount of weight to the tip into the shaft or the assembled club. You simply measure the amount of, that the tip deflects downward with the weight compared to without. The more deflection that occurs, the more flexible the shaft is at the same given length. That last part's important, at the same given length. Now, a deflection board may use a six or seven pound weight to bend the shaft from the butt end. If the shaft is reversed to measure tip deflection, then a lesser amount of weight is uh, required and a good way of determining uh, relative flexibility. A more common way for club makers to measure flex today is with the use of a frequency analyzer. The frequency analyzer can be used to measure the stiffness of a completed club or the raw or cut shaft. In either case, the butt end is secu uh, securely clamped into the analyzer. And then the head or the tip um, weight of the uh, shaft is plucked and then set into oscillation. Now, the higher the number of oscillations, again, at the same given length, the stiffer the club or the shaft is said to be. Now, there's several frequency analyzers on the market, and not all will measure the same. The reason is some analyzers may clamp 3 inches, others 5 inches or 7 inches of the shaft or the club, and some uh, may clamp with or without a grip. <coughs> In each case, you're going to get a different measurement. The key is making sure that all the clubs or shafts are measured the same way each and every time so you have data that you can compare on an apples-to-apples -apples basis. Now, the chart on this next slide is based upon the measurement of hundreds of assembled drivers and five irons with different shafts that are available today. So this takes into account the recommended tip trimming uh, by the manufacturers, the differences in the raw lengths of the shafts, as well as the swing weights. The thing I want you to take away from this chart is that first and foremost, the difference on average between adjacent flexes is not always a constant, but it's approximately like 10 CPMs between flexes. And that's generally been the accepted difference within the industry. And secondly, the frequencies of steel and graphite shafts on average aren't the same with the same letter designation. These two shaft materials should be treated separately or as apples and oranges. Okay, quick question. Now, averages are made up of what? Well, they're made up of the highest and the lowest readings and everything in between. The difference in assembled club frequency of identical flex, length, and swing weight can be quite considerable. And if you don't believe me, just look at this chart. Remember what I stated earlier that 10 CPMs is generally considered one full flex? Well, just take a look at the L-flex graphite range that I've highlighted there in yellow. Incredibly, that there's a 68 CPM range in what two different shafts from two different manufacturers designed as an L-flex shaft at the same given length and swing weight. Now, this would represent nearly a 7-flex range if 10 CPMs is considered one full flex. And remember this, that there's only five flexes. I should probably clarify.